When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, there is my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He who Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in, then you'll know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud that may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus brings the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us get him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. A little prayer will turn me in, you'll know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in. Then you'll know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Savior came from glory. How he gave his 
Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is through him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Yeah, man. Let's all stand in fellowship as the choir comes down.
it, man. All right. Well, I tell you what, <clears throat> that's some good singing choir. Y'all done a fine, fine job. And uh, uh, I told I told Brother Robert we're gonna start spreading the rumor. We we come to, we done come down here at the uh, Pentecostal Baptist, and he done been slain in the spirit. So uh, uh, I told him we're gonna we're gonna tell everybody he's slain in the spirit. Uh, let's go church. Y'all ready? And uh, I believe the Lord's already showed up. I believe He's here right now. And uh, Brother Eddie Palin's going to come. He's going to bring the Word of God to us tonight. And uh, he goes uh, he goes around all the, the jails and, and, and different places and preaches. And uh, and I want to give him uh, the opportunity to be able to tell you uh, what all he does. And so you come on up here, Brother Eddie, and uh, and just mind the Lord. Amen. Guess it's on. You hear me there? I don't want to get too close. I get loud anyway. <laughs> Praise God. You know, Psalms 122 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let's go into the house yeah. of God. Hey, Amen. I got saved May 8th, 08, 8 30 p.m., be 15 years. And ever since I got saved, I've been in the house of God. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Come in. We come in and we start singing these songs about Jesus, start lifting Jesus' his name up. The Bible says, in the Bible it says, stir up the Spirit. Stir up what Spirit? The Spirit that's in you, the Holy Ghost of God. If you've been saved, you've been born again, you got the Holy Ghost of God. And when I get in the house of God, and we start lifting up Jesus' name, my, hey, my Spirit starts getting stirred up. Amen. Praise God. I can come in sometimes and not be feeling too good and kind of be rough and think, oh, it's going to be hard to go tonight. I get in, buddy. I feel better going out and I come in. I can tell you that. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God tonight. Thank the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But uh, I come down here. I, I, I thank God for the brother to let me uh, present a, a prison ministry, jail ministry tonight. I praise God for you and thank you for allowing me to do it. Um, you know, I've been preaching in jails and prisons a long time, but I stepped out full time and I start going around to churches and uh, trying to get some help in it and. Uh, going around and everything, and I thank God. My, like I say, my name's Eddie Phelan. I'm out of Summer City Baptist Church uh, up on Dayton Mountain between Dayton and Pikeville, an old country church up there. Brother Tom Swafford was my pastor for about uh, 14 years. He's been dead probably about a year, year and a half now. He's went on with the Lord, but he pastored at Summer City Baptist Church for 51 years, same church. And boy, I'm glad God put me under an old mountain preacher, hey amen, when I got saved. Put me in the right place, old mountain preacher. And I thank God for that. But uh, like I say, I go to the prison. They said, right now tonight, as we sat here tonight, in Tennessee, we got 58,000 locked up. 58,000 people locked up today in jails and prisons in, in Tennessee. Right now tonight. Now, there's 14 state prisons in Tennessee. 14 state prisons throughout Tennessee. The BCX State Prison is where I go to. It's the intake, the classification up here in Bledsoe County, holds 2,500 prisoners. Now it's a uh, it's a three it's a level three prison. Uh, you got uh, uh, minimum, medium, and max prison in there. And what you do, you come into classification. Everybody's going to go there. That gets put in the penitentiary. No matter if it's in Memphis, Tennessee or up in Johnson City, you're going to go through the BCX State Prison because they're going to classify you. You're going to be there for probably a month, to eight weeks or something other getting classified. I get to preach out of the H building up there. That, that's classification. Some, some of them guys, I get to preach to them one time. I got one shot, and boy, I'm going to preach the gospel to them. And then, then we got other ones that stays there full time, and I get to preach to them over in Block 25 up there, the Rock Man. And get to preach all in that uh, in that prison up there, and it's a good ministry. God's been blessing it. It's really good ministry, and they've got 2,500 acres. Some of you may know who I'm talking about up there, been up there, but they got 2,500 acres out there. And it used to be a dairy farm for years. They done dairy farm. They turned it over to a beef farm. Now, I went through there. I'd see all them cows and stuff, and I got talking to some of them one day, and they said they had 650 head. 650 head of cattle up there. You got 2,500 acres. Boy, they fat and look good. Some of y'all raise cattle down here, but they got some good looking cattle up there at the prison. Hey, man. They got some cattle up there. You know, they get to work in that uh, 
Tricor Beef Farm. They got the Shaw Flooring uh, Training Center there for them. They get to work in that. There's just all kinds. Of, people says there ain't no opportunity in jail. There's opportunity in jail, in prison. You can get a college edu education in prison. There's no excuse. You can better yourself. You know, in prison, they can't say, well, I'm just in the system. Hey, man, they, they, got, they got a chance up there. Hey, Amen. But God's good. But I'll tell you something I've seen that I've seen that I ain't seen. I've been, I've been preaching at BCX uh, State Prison nine years. Now, I've not seen this nowhere. Now, they, I've, you know, you see the paper every now and then who they bring, who comes in and does services. And there'll be all kinds of different stuff. There'll be Jehovah Witnesses, this and that and other, all kinds of cults and stuff that comes in and does their service in there. The last time I was up at BCX prison, I'd never seen this before. I looked on the sheet there, and I asked that uh, state uh, uh, chaplain there, this state paid chaplain, I said, uh, I said, what's this right here? It said, Wiccan, Wiccan service, off of that Wicca. They got witch services going on now. I've never seen that. They come in and have a service up there. I'm telling you what, we're living in a time yeah. when they're having witch services up there. We need to be evangelizing these uh, jails and prisons and stuff. Now, I thank God for every missionary that goes all over this world. Thank God for them. Praise God. God sent them. But I'm telling you what, America's in bad shape. America's in trouble. America's in trouble. We need to be evangelizing these jails and prisons. We need to be evangelizing this uh, community where we're at. Amen. We need, hey, we're in bad shape. But I tell you what, God, God's moving. God's moving in the, in the jails and prisons. But I go to that prison up there. I've been up there nine years. I go to uh, Bledsoe County Jail down there. There's 150. It'll hold 150 at Bledsoe County Jail in Pikeville. I've been preaching in there 12 years in that, in that county jail. I've been down here at Squashy County Jail for uh, 12 years in that jail. That's it. It'll hold 100 in there. And uh, I tell you what, God's been moving. It's a good ministry. And when I'm moving, I mean, when I go up to southeast Kentucky, where I was born and raised at, when I'm visiting up there, I get to preach in my home jail. I call it my home jail. I tell them boys up there, when I get to go in there and preach, I tell them, this, I said, this jail right here is my home jail. I was locked up in here when I was 15 years old. And I know plenty about that southeast Kentucky jail, because that's where I was born and raised. I've been in that jail. And, and I get to preach up there. God's been opening doors. I preach at churches, help... Uh, Help out uh, churches that ain't got no pastors. There's a lot of little country churches that ain't got pastors right now. All over this, all over the country around through here. I was up Hendon Baptist Church this morning preaching in, filling in there this morning. Got done, my wife said, boy, you preach way too long. You preach way too long. I said, I'm used to preaching in jail. I preached in Bledsoe County Jail the other night for two hours. Two hours, amen. I, I, I'm usually preaching so long. I'll be knocking on the windows them go them correctional officers and say, time, time. <laughs> I preach, I preach till they get done when they run me off, amen. I, don't know, I just keep on going. I just can't help it, amen. I go in there, I go in there and give them a full message. I don't go in there just to tell them a little something, amen. I go in there and preach, amen. Well, praise God. But, uh, you know, uh, in America, we've got over two and a half million locked up right now. Over two and a half million is locked up in America right now. The United States has the largest prison population in the world. We've got more inmates in the, in America than they do anywhere in the world. Now, do y'all any y'all ever watch those uh, uh them uh, jail movies and stuff where they'll show them prisons that's over in other countries, some of them roughing. Hey man, well you see right there, hey, if you watch some of that right there, you'll understand why why they ain't got a lot of prisoners in there. I told them guys in 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 this jails around here, I said, You're in a hotel. <laughs> You're in a hotel compared to some of them over there. <laughs> There's not near as many go to jail over there. But uh but we have the largest uh, uh, prison system in the world here. And you know, uh, it costs about $85 a day for one inmate. $85 a day for one inmate. Costs about, that's about $31,000 a year. And you know who pays that? We do. Yeah. We pay that right there. The Tennessee Department of Corrections offers, uh, operating budget, this was a year or two ago, was $1.2 billion. $1.2 billion in Tennessee. That's Tennessee. Yeah. That's what it cost us, amen, right here in Tennessee. So it, it's a big cost to us. And you know, uh, Tennessee is the third highest violent crime rate in the USA, in the U.S. We're number three. The state of Tennessee is number three for having 
the most violent crimes. Now, you'd think some other state would have that right there, but the most violent crime, now, this is a year or two old, that data is, but but that, but we, the, we was number three, number three in violence, in violent crime, violent crimes. I preached to a man up here in a, in a county jail for two years before he went to trial. He was a, he, he, and then they convicted him. He was a convicted axe murderer. He chopped two up. So I preach, so you don't know what you're preaching to when you go in there. Hey, some, hey, some rough people in there. Hey, some rough people in there. And, uh, in, in, uh, Tennessee right now, the death row, there's 47 males and one female on death row, on death row here in, in Tennessee. And I also preach to the women too in these, uh, in these prisons and jails too. I get the pre opportunity to preach to them too. And you know what the worst part of it is? 55% have children under 18. 55% of them have children under 18. And you know, I went into BCX State Prison up there one day. I pulled up, and I was walking up through there to go into the gatehouse, and they got them big flag poles out there. It's got the flags on them and everything. And I was walking up through there, and I looked over in that, in that little grassy area, and here's two or three little old kids about that big playing in that grass there. And boy, I tell you what, God hit me. God hit me. I thought, oh, devil, I'm heading in there today. Hey, man, I'm heading in there to preach. Them little kids ain't got no daddy. Maybe somebody get set free today. Somebody get saved, born again. Them little old kids, boy, that tire your heart out right there. And you know, when I walk into the BCX State Prison, they've got... They've got the uh, double seats down through there back to back. And that the people come in, the mamas and daddies, sisters and brothers and cousins come to see the people in there, come to visit. And when I walk into that place, when I walk in there, every eye's up on me when I walk in there. And you know what? You know what? They ain't looking at me. They're looking at what I'm a holding right there. When I walk in that, when I walk in that BC Gay House State Prison, they look their eyes up on this right here. Because I can see the sorrow and the pain and the trouble in their faces and their eyes. I can see it. And they're, they're just hoping that I'll get in there and preach to their people and somebody get saved today. <laughs> Amen. I guarantee you, I can see it in their heart. I can feel it. And they're looking at you, you know. But I praise God for the ministry. Uh, you know, we take, uh, or I take Bibles and tracts into the ones that I can. Uh, I, I get them. I buy off Rock Ages a lot of stuff. Uh, we know, uh, talking about Brother Ricky and, uh, I know them down there and uh, take Bibles and tracts in. And then uh, me and my wife, we, we had a, uh, uh, a ministry in Spring City Cure Center in the nursing home several years over there. And then when COVID hit, it locked it down and took it out. And we ain't never got to go back in there. But, you know, that was one of the best ministries we had was in the nursing home. And I encourage you as a church, amen, that these things open up and you can get back in them. As do, in, this, in the church, Get together and do a uh, uh, do a, a nursing home ministry. Them people need people to come in and see them. A lot of them ain't got nobody to come in and see them. They need somebody to come in, go in there and sing some songs to them, amen. Uh, go in there and pray with them. Just go in there and visit them. Tell them about the Lord God. Uh, uh, that's good ministry. And I tell you what, I'm going to tell you one thing about it too. Uh, there was an old woman in there that couldn't. Some of them can't come to the activity room. Some of them couldn't come to, to the preaching time. And I'd go, me and my wife go around, we'd visit and talk to them, you know, and get to talk to them stuff. And there was this one woman, I remember her good, and, and, and she, she was all hooked up. She couldn't come and stuff. And I'd go in there, and, I, and when I'd walk in, guess what? When I walked in, her lady, big, she had one big King James Bible, about that big, amen, had that big letters in it. She had a big old King James Bible laying right there on her table. She had gospel music playing every time on that, on that radio, on that tape player thing. She had she had music, gospel music going in there, man. I get in there and I'd start telling her about what I was going to preach on back there, what, what I was going to preach on. It wasn't long. I, I got to preaching in there and I preached thirty minutes with her. And she hey, she couldn't hardly get her hands up, and she'd hold her hands up in there and she'd say, "Praise the Lord." And man, I'm telling you what, the whole, hey Holy Ghost of God come in there and we had a meeting in there, buddy. I'm telling you what, people says, well, I'm, I'm old and I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing for God. Listen here, God ain't done with you. 
you to your last breath. God ain't done with you. And I told them nurses home people, I said, God ain't done with you. That old woman showed me something, hey man. She showed me something that she's a witness, buddy, right on her deathbed. Like yep. there, I, I, I got to visit her just a night, wasn't long she was fixing to die. Her people was in there and I was going to go up there. And I said, well, I won't go in because there's bad shape and stuff. And one of them nurses said, no, let me go talk to them because I hadn't met none of her people. And they want me to come in there. And I remember the last time I go in there and see her. Boy, I tell you what, she, hey, she, she was a woman of God. She was a woman of God. She was a witness, buddy, to this world. Laying flat on her back. Praise God. That, that's one of the best ministries. They are right there. I praise God. I, I just encourage you to, to get one up and go once a month, go once every whatever, and go in there and visit. And y'all sing while y'all sing and stuff. Praise God. Go in there and lift them up. Hey, man, I'm telling you, they need it. And you know, I've been I've been in them meetings in there with them old people strapped in them wheelchairs and everything else. I get in there preaching right hard. Let me tell you something. I preached in churches all over the places and everything. But I get in them meetings in that nursing home meeting and boy, they'd be going, Amen! 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 Boy, I'll tell you what. We had meetings. Man. But you can tell they from the old time way. Hey, man, they, they get happy. Praise God. That's good. Praise the Lord Jesus. Been good to me. I want to tell you something. Uh, what I preach in the, well, I'm, I'm going to get that in a minute. Is everybody getting saved in jail? No, everybody ain't getting saved in jail. Is everybody getting saved in these church houses? No, there ain't many in this world out here getting saved, amen, this day. It's, it's a falling away. The Bible says it's going to be a great falling away. And I believe we're in that time. We're in that time and stuff. But there's still people getting saved. We're still doing what we're supposed to do. Amen, praise God. Still doing what we're supposed to do. But uh, but getting saved. There's still people getting saved in jail. Now I've heard, uh, I've been in churches and stuff and I'd hear somebody tell a report. Some preacher said, went to a jail over here, several of them. They said, well, 10 got saved over there last night. 20 got saved over there. 15 got saved in that meeting. I hear that right there. And let me tell you something. I've been preaching in jails and prison for 12 years. Listen. That's profession. And I've seen them do it. I've seen them get done preaching. I've been in there with other preachers stuff. They get done preaching. They'd say, everybody that wants to get saved, come up here and hold my hand. They'd get in a circle and say a prayer. Half the jail get up. And you know what they do? Them preachers, they go down to the church house and they'll go down there and say, this many got saved. This many professed to be saved. Come to the altar. Listen here, they're trying to get professions. They're trying to get numbers. I'll come back and give you a report pretty often come down here and tell you about what's going on in the jail ministry, but I don't bring no numbers. I don't bring no numbers. God's got a lamb book of life, and he's writing it down. Lamb book of life, amen. He's writing it down. I don't bring numbers, amen, because I could get all kinds of professions. I don't do it that way. God save them right where they say that, amen. I give all the call every time. I give all the call, tell them, how, and I'm, I'm preaching how to get to God, being born again, Change life. If they ain't born again, they ain't changed life. Hey Amen. They ain't going through the gate. Hey Amen. That's what I preach. I want you to know what I preach. I preach hard. I don't preach no little. Uh, God is love. Now, God is love. God is love. God, He's a God of mercy. Hey Amen. You wouldn't see a man like me standing here. When you hear my testimony, you'll know why. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. He's also a God of wrath. And He's a God of judgment. When they give Him the whole book. Give them the whole book, amen. I don't see people born again saved going through the gates of heaven. Their life be changed. They won't be coming back in two months, three months, coming in and out of jail, and then say, oh, I'll just rededicate my life. No, you need to get saved, born again. That rededication ain't no count, amen. You need to get born again, born of God, amen. That's what I preach to because you'll have a changed life, amen. And I'll give you some testimonies uh on it too, what what God's doing. I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple of these. I ain't gonna give me because I, I won't preach a little bit too. But uh, Bledsoe County just ain't been long ago. I can give you a, a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of them uh, about what's happened. But in Bledsoe County Jail. Now, when you go when when you go in the county jail and stuff, a lot of time people when you when you start preaching born again, change life and stuff. Listen, I've seen them. They bow up. They put their they'll go like this right here. They start putting them arms up. Man, I preach right down the middle. I jump right down. I preach about that close to everybody. And I run up and down the aisles. Amen. I'll be right on top of them. And I preach to them. And I, and I see them. They'll be bowed up. They don't want to hear it, you know. And uh, I was preaching one night. There's a boy like that, young man like that. 
And I got done, I got done preaching. I can tell you, didn't like it. Amen. I can tell you, didn't like it. Well, I come back the next time. I come back the next time, and he was there, and I start preaching the same way, same preaching. Amen. And then he he's bowed up again. And I know about three quarters of the way, I knew God was dealing with him. You know when the Holy Ghost of God dealing with them. I've seen God deal with people in there in the prison. Man had arms this big around, tattoo 666 on their head and everything else, and God put them on the floor. Tears rolling out their eye. God put them on the floor. You don't, hey, you don't show no weakness in jail, in prison. You don't show no weakness. But I've seen God put them on the ground, buddy. And, uh, but, uh, but that young man preached that day, or that time, and I come back, I come back the third time. I come back into that jail in that cell block that third time and I walked in there and as soon as I walked through the door, hey, Brother Eddie, hey, Brother Eddie. That same one's like it. Hey, Brother Eddie, hey, Brother Eddie. Got something on, I want to talk to you. And I thought, there's something going on. There's something going on. He's bowed up before. Now then, Brother Eddie, hey, Brother Eddie, hey, Brother Eddie. And I said, I, and I, I started talking to him. He said, listen. He said, that first time you preached up here, he said, that made me madder and far what you preached on. You made me madder and far. He said, that second time you come, he said, I started to go back to my cell. He said, I started to go back to my cell and not even come, but he said, I was going to give you one more chance. He's going to give me one more chance to preach. And he said, you preached that same thing. He said, it made me mad again. And he said, about halfway through it, he said, he said I got that conviction, that Holy Ghost conviction you was preaching on. He said, I got that Holy Ghost conviction. He said, I didn't get saved right there. That was on Tuesday. He said, Wednesday morning, he said he got up. God was still knocking on his heart. He said, Thursday, he got up. God's still knocking on his heart. Listen, this word right here, this word needs to be preached. It says in uh, Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the uh, dividing sunder of the soul and spirit. Amen. It's a discerner of the heart and the intents of the, of the heart. But listen, that was still bothering him on that third day. On that third day, on Friday, he said he got up and he said, I hit that floor. And he said, I repented of my sin, what you've been preaching about. And he said, I repented of my sin. And he said, I got born again, what you've been talking about. And I said, praise God. Hey, some of them still getting saved, amen. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Now listen to me. Most of them in, in the jails and prison haven't been raised in church. They haven't been raised in church. I ain't been, I never, I wasn't raised in church. I'm going to go into my testimony here in a minute and you'll understand. But a lot of these men ain't, they know Jesus. They've heard Jesus' name. People say, well, everybody in America's heard Jesus' name. They don't need no preaching. Yes, they need preaching. They've heard Jesus' name. But there was a man over in the BCX State Prison. And I got done preaching. When, you get, when I get done preaching, I shake everybody's hand before they go back to their cell. And I, and I sit and shake everybody's hand. And you notice the ones that lay back to the last, they won't talk to you about something. They won't say something about what you preach. They've got a Bible question on, on the Word of God or something. they got to talk to you about something. Well, there's one laid back to the last, and, and, and he said, Brother, he said, Eddie, he said, I was raised in church all my life. These people was raised in church in the penitentiary. Y'all listen to me, young people back here. You ain't been born again. Let me tell you something. These people, I preach to people that also have been raised up in Baptist churches. And he said, uh, he said, Brother Eddie, he said, I'm scared to death when I get out here. I, he said, I don't know. He said, I'm scared to death to get out here if I uh, go back. And I said, well, I just preached the gospel. I said, be saved, be born again. He said, he said, no, I was raised in church. He said, my sisters and my brothers, my natural born sister and brother, he said, they all doing good. I said, well, you need to be uh, uh, saved. He said, Brother Eddie, he said at thir 12, 13 years old, he said, I did that. He said, I did that. So I looked at him and I thought, he's thinking he's saved. He's in the penitentiary for do cooking dope. Now he's afraid he's going to get out that he ain't going to make it. And he was saved at 12, 13 years old. That's what he thought. I looked at him and God hit me. Holy Ghost hit me. And I said, I said, I don't know what outfit, where, what church you come from and stuff, but I said, do you believe when you're saved and born again, that the Holy Ghost of God immediately comes in you, dwells in the temple of God within you, as soon as you get saved. It says in the Bible that you were sealed to the day of redemption with the Holy Ghost of God. I said, do you believe that right there? He said, oh yeah, that's what we, that's what I, he said, that's what I was uh, taught, yeah. And I said, okay. I said, how can you take alcohol and drugs and pour it down on the Holy Ghost of God? 
It don't work. It don't work. You cannot be saved and born again and pour drugs and alcohol down on top of the Holy Ghost of God that dwells in you. Can't do it. He looked at me and he said, I never thought of that. He said, I never thought of that. He said, you saying I might not be saved? I said, you better check on your salvation. You think you can't make it. Amen. Whew, he'll free you. Jesus free you. But hey, I've seen people get saved in jail. I've got a lot more I could tell you, but I ain't going to keep you here all night. I've got a lot more I want to tell you about my testimony. You'll understand why I go to the jails and prison. You know, I was born in southeast Kentucky. That's where I come from. Born in southeast Kentucky. My daddy was an alcoholic all his life. Before I was born, my dad was an alcoholic. I watched him die at 49 years old. All my people, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, everybody, all of them, dope addicts, drunks, all kind of sin. We didn't go to church. My daddy didn't take me to church. You know how many times I've been in church in my life before I got saved? You can count it on one hand. I never know what went on here. You say, aren't there no churches in southeast Kentucky? There's all kinds of churches in southeast Kentucky all over that mountain over there. I know where there's all kinds of churches, but my people didn't go. My daddy didn't go to church. He didn't pray about no meal. We wouldn't talk about Jesus. Now, my, my people believed there was a God. We believed in Jesus. I always believed in Jesus. I wasn't no ethic. I believed in God. Every time I was locked up in jail, every time a hard time was coming down, buddy, guess what? I was calling on God. I was calling on Jesus. I know He could help me. I know there's a God. Hey, man. I knew there's a God. But there's a difference in believing there's a God and, and knowing there's a God like that than being born again, being saved. There's a difference. There's a difference in it. So I was raised up in southeast Kentucky. Them game cocks, boy, you'll see them around here too. Some people know what I'm talking about. Them old fighting roosters. Eight years old, got my first game cock. You'll see them little pins with them chickens all around. Butchers, them little old fly pen things around. Hey, man, they, hey, they fighting chickens. Hey, man, they fighting game cocks. And I know Marion County down in here is famous for it because when I first come down to this country, hey, man, this was a big, big game cock place down here in Marion County. But I, I tell you what, Game chickens, game dogs. I had 45 American pit bull terriers on my yard. Now, American pit bull terrier, he's a dog. It ain't no sin to have a pit bull dog. You might have somebody in here got a pit bull dog, got some of them. Hey, man, they're a dog. Hey, man, there ain't no sin to have one. But what you do with them is a lot different. I had 45 American uh, pit bull terriers on my yard when I got saved. I'm talking about grown, grown dogs. Somebody asked me one day, he said, how many, do how many pit dogs you got now? I said, I got seven acres. I don't know. <laughs> got seven acres. I sell, I sell them dogs for $1,000 a piece. $1,000 a piece. I knew everybody all over the country in the dogs, in the pit bull dogs. I go to Detroit. We'd be up in Detroit, Michigan one weekend. We'd be back down in New Orleans, down in Baton Rouge, down in Louisiana one weekend. Next weekend, I'd be over in Carolina. I'd be down in Florida running them dogs. Man, I knowed everybody. That was what, that's what I done. Run them dogs, hey, man. I sell them dogs. Hey, hey, I was a big, big person in, in the old dog business. Hey, man. But I did all that kind of stuff and sin that I run in all them years. And you say, brother, how'd you get saved? Boy, I'm glad you didn't ask me. I'm glad you didn't ask me how I got saved. Let me tell you something. I know every one of, I told you, I was in the house of God on one hand when I was this high. Listen here. Everybody goes to a funeral. They're going to be a funeral somewhere. I've been to funerals during the years. I've been, through, I've been through the funerals and stuff at times and stuff. And guess what? They had the Word of God every time. And you know, they go Psalms, uh, Psalms 23, six verses there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's the good Word of God. That's good to preach during a funeral. Praise God for it. They'll go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears. Praise God for that. That's the good word of God. You hear that a lot at the funeral home. But I'm telling you what, if you're a preacher and you preach some of these funerals, buddy, we better be preaching about being born again to go with it. Amen. We better be preaching about being born again to go with it. I went to a funeral May 7th, 08. My uncle was dead. Went to a funeral home southeast Kentucky. This old man of God got up there and he started preaching. John 3, 3. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Amen. He started talking about, he started preaching on born again. 
I'd never hear born again in my life. I'd hear about believing, but see, I didn't know nothing about this Bible. I didn't know 66 books of the Bible, 39 Old Testament, 27 New Testament books. I didn't know nothing about this book right here. I didn't know nary book in the Bible. And that's what I'm telling you about these people out here and about these people in jail. They ain't never heard the gospel. They ain't never heard the real gospel. I'm telling you. And hey, he started preaching on born again. Now this is how a man's heart is. I told y'all I've been to church three, three times in my life when I was little. I sat in third row back. He's preaching that born again stuff. And I thought to myself, he's crazy. It don't say that in the Bible. I know better than that. It don't say that in the Bible. And I was rebelling against the Word of God. I was rebelling against what he was saying about you had to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. And I thought, I believe in Jesus. What's he talking about? I'd never heard that before. Amen. Well, I sat there in that third row in that funeral home. And guess what was happening? Holy Ghost conviction. That's another thing I didn't know about. I'd never heard about Holy Ghost conviction in my life. But I was getting it there because God was showing me, when you die, old boy, you just die, you're going to hit hell. That coffin was on fire for me. God showed me right there where I was standing at. Listen, I was wrestling with that Word of God and what He said, but I, I, I was rebelling against it. Did I get saved right there at that funeral home that day? No. I, I rebelled against it, but it was that's when it first hit me right there. Come home that night, that's May 7th, come back to Tennessee from Kentucky. All right. I had a funeral to get rid of. You know how we you know how I got rid of funerals all my life? A bottle, pills, and everything I take because I'm trying to get rid of that funeral. I'm trying to get rid of that separation of my uncle, separation of my kinfolk. You try to get rid of it. This is how the world gets to try to get rid of it. Pour it down. Get it off. That's the way I always did. Well, I was doing the same thing that night. But this time, I had two things on me. Now I had the, that born again. That Word of God was cutting my heart off. You must be born again. And boy, that was eating me up. Still eating me up. Next day there, May 8th, I got up. It was still bothering me. Hey, man. 8.30 p.m. that night on a stormy night, lightning coming down out of the sky. It was raining. There was lightning that would shake this building right here. I'm talking about that boom, boom lightning. May 8th. And in May when it comes to them big boomers. And here I found myself on top of a big hill, a big old pasture hill up there, and there's one tree. It's bigger than that pulpit, 150-year-old oak tree. I found myself under that tree. Listen, I, hey, I was empty. My life, my life had been empty. I told you I had American pit bull terriers. I sell dope. Hey man, I raised dope. I'd have enough money to choke a mule. I was a gambler. I won one week. I'd have a a big thing of money. I next week would be broke. Hey man, but I'm telling you what, you try to fill this world with stuff, new trucks, new cars, new this, new that, the new wires off of it. You you try to fill yourself. You can never get filled till you get filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been empty. I was empty. I was tired of myself. I was an addict. Man, I've been 33 years. 33 years in it. 33 years deep in it. And you know what happened that night? Under that tree, I started calling on God. Somebody like me, I start calling on God. I said, if there's a God in heaven, speak to me. Listen here, I tell you, God speak to you. You call on God with all your heart. Hey Amen. God speak to you. He'll speak to your heart. Listen here, you know what God told me that night? I'm tired of fooling with you. And you know what He was telling me about that? It's because every time you're in trouble, every time trouble's in your life, that's when you call on me. That's when you call on me. Only when trouble's there. And you know what I told the Lord that night? I said, Lord, I'm done. Lord, I'm done. And I ain't talking about no jailhouse religion. I ain't talking about no church house religion. I said, Lord, I'm done. I didn't tell him I was going to get no Bible. I didn't tell him I was going to go down to the church house, start going to church. I sure didn't tell him I was going to go preaching before him. Amen. I didn't tell him all that. I said, Lord, I'm done. And when I got in the house of God, and I looked at uh, chapter 9 of Acts, and I seen a man named Paul in there. Amen. On Damascus Road. Amen. God knocked him down. You know what he said? Lord, I'm done. I'll do whatever you want me to do. That blowed me away. That was the same thing I told God and I had never seen the book yet. Amen. Praise God. I said, boy, Paul, 
Woo! Praise God. Amen. You got to give it all to Him. Amen. To be done. And that's what's wrong with people. That's why they don't get saved. They don't give it all to God. And uh, that night I give it all to God. Let me tell you something. When I walked out in under that tree that night, that night, May 8th, 08, 8.30 p.m., as I stand right here in front of you tonight, they've not been one pot joint, one drink of beer, one drink of whiskey, one snort of dope, one pill, one nothing, because I got free. I got saved. I got born amen. again. And that's amen. what happens to you if, uh, if you get really truly saved. Amen. amen. That's what happened. They ain't been one. Amen. He cleared you. Free. I was preaching over in Ray County one night in a little old country church, and I went back there and uh, shake hands at the end and everything. And there's this young lady come up to me, and she said, Boy, that was good, brother. I know what you mean. She said, I, I'm a recovering addict. I looked at her and I said, Sister, I said, if you've been born again, born of God, I said, I don't want to never hear that out of your mouth that you're a recovering addict. You're free. Listen here, I'm set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. I ain't no recovering nothing. Amen. I ain't no recovering nothing. When I got saved and born again out under that tree that night, nine days later, not that Sunday, but the next Sunday, nine days later, I walked through the house of God. Why did I go to the house of God? They didn't ask. They didn't come knock on my door and say, Eddie, you'll come to church. Amen. They wasn't none of that. I come right into the house of God. I know that's where I need to be. And God put me under an old mountain preacher, preached 51 years out there. And I praise God for it. I praise God for it. Amen. That's what the Lord's done in my life. Amen. I praise the Lord. I, I followed Him. I mean, I've done. I've done this world. Man, if you live long enough, see, a lot, a lot of my kin folks stuff, they didn't live as long as I did. I run 33 years in it. Amen. That's why I tell them guys in jail, I said, you keep running. You keep running. I said, I said you know how many in uh, 2021 died of overdose? I ain't talking about suicide. I'm talking about died of fentanyl overdose. It's coming across the border by tons. It comes from China, made in Mexico, and then they bring her on in. Fentanyl. Like fentanyl laced dope. I said, in 2021, there was 115,000 in one year left here. Young men and women left here on that dope. I said, you get born again, hey man, you get rid of that because you don't know when your last breath. You go out of here, you go out of this, uh, you go out of this church, you go out of this jail, <laughs> hey man, and you don't get saved, and, and you go back and you take it. And an addict's going to take something. That's going to go ahead. You're going to say, well, my buddy said, this is good stuff. Man. It's clean. This ain't got nothing on it. It's good. No, you're an addict. You'll take whatever you get. And you don't know what's good and what ain't. Amen. You'll die. Amen. Your last breath. But I praise God for that. Amen. Thank the Lord Jesus. And you know, what I preach in there, and I'll read something to you that I cut out. A brother in, in the Lord Jesus uh, wrote this down, and I put it in the back of my Bible. And I read it a lot of places I go so you understand well, I preach, amen. This, this is what a brother wrote, and I thought this is so true. Listen to what the brother wrote here. He said, I am fully convinced that much harm has been done to the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This damage has been done here in our country and on the mission field by men who hold to an easy believism mentality with regards to winning souls. This is a gospel that can win people to Christ without Holy Ghost conviction being evidence in the life of the sinner. This is a gospel that tells men they can be saved without repenting of their sins or bowing to Jesus Christ as Lord. This is a gospel that neglects to instruct the sinner to place his faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a gospel that leaves the sinner unchanged, unconverted, even though they may go through the motions of the plan of salvation. The Bible clearly teaches us that they are some absolute essentials for salvation and that true conversion always produces a transformed life. You hear that right there? That's as true as it can get right there of what he just now said. If they ain't been a, a, transferred li a transformed life, you ain't got Christ. You ain't got Christ. I hear people in churches all the time. And they'll say, pray for me, I'm struggling. Or it's hard to be a Christian. And I thought, hard to be a Christian? Whoo, you ain't heard my testimony. You ain't heard my life, how I live. Man, it's been the best, easiest thing i ever done is be a Christian. Best thing in my life to be a Christian. It ain't hard for me to be no Christian. 
Man, it's hard living back when I was laying drunk, puking my guts out all day and dying. Hey, man, I've all day several times, didn't die. But let me tell you something. I've laid and puked my guts out about to die. And life like that right there, I have to get up in the next morning, row up a joint, run up a line, hey, amen, a dope just to get started, hey, amen. Hey, this is the best life I ever had. It ain't no hard to be no Christian. Woo, praise God. Best time I ever had. I tell them guys, I said, I'm, fi- I'm 15 years older than when I got saved. 15 years. And I said, my body was a wreck, buddy. Hey, I was puking blood and blood going this way and that way out of me. I, hey, I was about dead when God saved me. I said, I'm in better shape 15 years later. I'm in better shape than I was 15 years ago. It's good to be with God. And I'm 15 years older. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But the Lord is good. And that that's what I preach at the uh, jails and prisons. I'm going to go over one thing here. Uh, some points. I'll be done. I know I, I, I run over. I, 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 it's hard for me to look at a watch. Amen. But praise God. I, I, I'll be easy here tonight. This is what I believe. The Bible says, John 3, 3, except the, except the more, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He told Nicodemus three times. That you have to be born again. I hear John 3.16 a lot of times preach. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He, be, that he gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Praise God for that verse right there. But you know the people that I talk to and they'll throw that verse on you, they know nothing about chapter 3 in John. That verse is a true verse. Praise God. That's what, what He done. But you got to go back to, chapter, uh, to, the, to the first verse. you got to go back to John 3, 1. And it says that a, a man named Nicodemus come by night to see Jesus. A Pharisee, a man of the Pharisee. In that verse 2, he said, uh, For we know thou art a teacher sent from God, else you couldn't do these miracles. Nicodemus didn't ask him how to get to heaven. He was, a, he was a religious man. He was out of the seed of Abraham. He was a Pharisee. He was a preacher of the time. He didn't come to ask Jesus how to get how to get to heaven. But the third verse, Jesus said, Barley, barley, I say unto thee, ye must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know what he told him? He just told Nicodemus, You're going to hell. He just that's what he told him. He said, You're going to hell. Amen. Tells us three times. So what 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 he's saying here, what God's saying that John 3 16, that's what God done to you. He, 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 he give his son. Amen. But you have to be born again. That's not preached enough in, in the uh, churches, in the jails and stuff. You must be born again. Understand that they had to be a supernatural act of God. If you got saved, there's a supernatural act of God. He comes in and He does a supernatural act in your heart imparting to you a new life. Amen. That's what God does. I tell them all the time down there, I said, how in the world did I pass this liquor store to come down here to preach to y'all tonight? I said if I wasn't something called the Holy Ghost of God in me, some power in me, I'd have pulled over and got me a half a gallon of, of, uh, of Jim Bean Black 12-year-old liquor. And I got me a half a gallon of that. And I'd throw this Bible out the window and y'all been sitting here thinking, where's old Brother Eddie at? He must he must uh, backslid a little bit. Where's Brother Eddie? I said, that, I said that, that's what would happen if God didn't do something to help me. Amen. God, God's got to help you. Amen. He's going to. Amen. But I believe in being born again. I believe in Holy Ghost conviction. You don't hear that no more than preached a lot of times. But you know in John 6, 44, Jesus said, no man can come to me. Jesus said, no man can come to me. Except, boy, praise God for the except, except the Father that sent me, draw him and I'll raise him up in the last day. What Jesus is saying? He says, the Father's going to send the Holy Ghost to draw you, amen, and then you can come to me, amen. Then you can get saved. Because that, you've been baptized in here, you get baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's how it works. you got to have conviction. Boy, that's what I had that night, that day at that funeral home. you got to have repentance. You don't hear pre- repentance preach, preach no more much. Don't hear repentance. But you can't get saved without repentance. I've heard them say, oh, you just come and believe and all that stuff works out later. No. Repentance comes before. It says in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 7 10, for a godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. A godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. That's why I tell them in jail. And a worldly sorrow worketh death. And you can cry all kinds of tears. I've seen tears in the jailhouse that deep, amen. 
three months later, six months later, they come back in. They never got saved because they had a worldly repentance. That night I got saved under that tree. I had a godly, godly sorrow. I was done. I had a godly sorrow. And that's what it takes to be saved. If you ain't had no godly sorrow, amen, you ain't going to get saved in repentance. You know, John the Baptist, his message was repentance. That's what he preached. Jesus come, his first message was repentance, amen. Then Jesus' 12 disciples, he sent them out. Read about it. He sent them out. Their first me- their message Jesus sent out for them to preach was repentance. Paul the apostle preached repentance. Amen. Repentance. you got to repent to come to God. Amen. You don't hear that much no more. And you say, well, brother, what about faith? Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder to them that diligently seek Him. You've got to have faith. Amen. I preach faith too. Number four point, Jesus said this in Luke 9, 23. Jesus said to them all, If any man come after Me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's what happens when you get saved. Hey Amen. I throwed everything down. Hey Amen. I picked up the cross. I picked up my cross. You pick up your cross daily, not Jesus' cross. Your cross. Because when you're witness out in this world, most people listen to me and take it pretty good. But I've had some. I've had some roughings too. I've run across some roughings. Me and Brother Tom Swafford was uh, taking flyers out. We was doing a revival, so we was going to get people to come out in the community. There was a man out there. He'd been mowing or something, working there, and he was in the yard standing there and stuff. He got done there, and he's standing there. I walked up, and I handed him a flyer like that right there, and he looked at it, and as soon as he looked at it, he just throwed it down on the ground like that right there. You know what I've done? I just ran down, picked it up. I never said nothing, walked back and got in the truck, hey, amen. Bible says, hey, he sent out his disciples, amen. He said, if they don't receive you, amen, shake the dust of the sand, of your sandals off, amen, for a testimony, amen, against them, amen. It'd be better for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment, amen. I ain't going to fight nobody and argue. I'll debate with you the Word of God. want to help you some way in the Word of God that, that way. Anybody wants to talk about it? Yeah, but I ain't going to be in no fighting match, amen. And, hey, some people hate the gospel so bad. They're ready to fight you. Amen. And that's what it says when take up your cross. Take up your cross daily. Amen. Because you're going to have one. But I praise God and I pray that everybody in here has been saved, been born again. Born of God. If I give you anything tonight, you must be born again. Understand that. Understand that. I talk to people all the time and they can witness and, and, and you talk to them you ask them to save. Everybody tells you they're saved. But you get to saying, you know, you tell them they're saved and they say they're saved. And then you start talking about born again with them. Born again. And then they don't know nothing about being born again. They know nothing of born again. you saved. you saved right here. You're saved. You know what born again is. You know what it is. I try to preach it at jail. Try to get them to understand the power and, the, and what happens when you get saved and born again. And I said, you'll never truly know it until you get saved, until you get born again. But I said, I try to give it to you and show you what's going to happen, amen, the best I can to break it down, because I preach on it a lot, amen, being born again, because that's what it's going to take. And a lot of them ain't hearing that stuff. They just think they believe in Jesus. I'll give you one more thing, and I quit. Before I was saved, this is what I thought. I told you I, didn't, I believed in Jesus. I always did. But I thought this. I thought, why is God going to send me to hell? I was born in Brush Creek, Kentucky. Y'all hear my testimony. My people didn't go to church. My daddy didn't take me to church or nothing. Why is God going to send me to hell? Why? I believed in Jesus. I knew that as God. I believed in Jesus, right? And so I would had heard through the years, and and somebody said, well, there's a judgment day coming. I've heard that. And I thought, yeah, they are. And I thought, you know what? What am I going to do on judgment day? I believe in Jesus. That's what it says. I believe in Jesus. Now, I've been pretty bad. I've done a lot of bad stuff. But I've done more good in my life than bad. I've done more good than I have bad. That's what I thought. I thought when I stand for God, and I didn't know nothing about Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11, and I saw a great white throne of Him that sat on whose face the heaven and earth fled away. There was no place found for them. And then verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open with the S. And they were judged according to their works. But there was another book 
The book of life. And boy, praise God. Amen. I learned that you've got to be in that book of life. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I learned that it wasn't just me going to stand there on my good works. I'd be in hell, buddy. You better know something about this book. Amen. It wasn't going to do me no good. It wasn't going to be, do me no good. I'm going to stop right there and we'll pray a little bit here and uh, I'll be done. Father in heaven, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, Lord God, to thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor. I thank you for all these people here tonight, Lord God, the preacher. Lord God, I, I thank you for them standing up and standing on your word, Lord God. I praise you. Lord God, bless them and help them. And Lord God, if there's one here that not been born again, that's not been saved, they don't know what I'm talking about. Lord God, you deal dealing with their heart here tonight. Lord God, this altar's been open. This altar's open. You need to come to this altar. Come to this altar and call out to God. Repent of your sin. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus and follow Him all the days of His life. He'll save you. In Jesus' name, amen.